And the Sixers begin the season with all sorts of questions about James Harden, who wants to be traded to the Clippers, who has called president of basketball operations Daryl Morey a liar, and is not with the team in Milwaukee. Uh, let's get the latest on all this from a guy who can certainly sort it out for us, and that is Chris Haynes. Chris, lay it out for us. EJ, let's go back to Wednesday, yesterday, and glad to be back with you guys. James Harden showed up to practice yesterday, and the Sixers were surprised. He was away for 10 days for what the team is calling an excused absence. But when he arrived at practice, I was told that team officials kind of suggested that he should stay back not travel with the team in Milwaukee so he can go through his workouts because he's been away, go through his workouts. And James Harden, from what I was told, interpreted that as, as that, as a, as a suggestion. So he went through practice. Then he ended up showing up at the airport to board the flight with his teammates. And he was stopped by a security official who told him he wasn't permitted to get on board. From there, Elton Brand, general manager for the Sixers and head coach Nick Nurse, came, approached James Harden and told him, listen, we need you to stay back. We have the resources. We need to track your progress. We need to track your measurables and your speed levels because you've been away for so long. Um, and we have all the resources back at the facility. And James was not happy about that. He, he wanted to get back reacclimated with his teammates. He wanted to be here with his guy. He's really close. And he works out with um, Coach Rico Hines, the assistant coach of the Sixers. And Rico is on the trip here. And so he felt it would be better served if he, he's with the team. And so he is not here. Um, he left the airport yesterday without further incident. I can tell you he did go to the facility today and got his work in. But there's another wrinkle to this. The NBA is kind of weighing in. This is from Mike Bass of the NBA. He says, we're looking into the facts around James Harden's availability tonight to determine whether an approved reason exists for his lack of participation. And we all know with the, the new guidelines for star players that, you know, usually if a star player is hurt for whatever reason, he still has to show up at the arena to be present and visible for fans. But from what I'm told, James Harden is not hurt. So I don't know what the Sixers are going to tell the NBA. I know they've reached out to both sides um, to this point. And so we'll have further developments probably in the next coming days on what results from that investigation. I guess hurt feelings don't count uh, as, uh, as part of an injury or something like that. And, and here's my next question. How long can the Sixers let this go before they do something? That's the million dollar question, EJ. We know Daryl Morey, who, you know, that's the president of basketball operation. That's who James Harden has an issue with. We know he's going to wait until the very last opportunity <clears throat> to where he feels like he can get the value that he is seeking in return. And so I don't know how long he's willing to go to go this route. I know James Harden, we, we know James Harden, you know, he's going to say what's on his mind. He's going to do what he feels in the best interest of, of him. But, you know, he wants to be out there. He wants to be out there. He wants to get back reacclimated. What I can say is I spoke with Joel and B. And this this is a star player who rival teams are monitoring and see where he's at, where his head is at. So I asked him about the situation. And he said, look, I'm here to try to guide and lead the guys that we have available right now. He said, because ultimately, I want to win. I want to do what's best for the organization. And I hope that we can get in a, be in a good situation where we can compete at a championship level. And I said, OK, now. But specifically, as it pertains to James Harden, where are you at with that? And he responded that we are a better team with James Harden. So hopefully things can be resolved, he said, but I don't know the future. Chris Haynes, thank you very much uh, for shedding uh, whatever light you, you could on, on a situation <laughs> that, uh, man, it's, uh, it just gets more tough to figure out as the days go by. Chuck, what, what's your take on it? Uh, it's not tough to figure out. James Harden can't come back to Philly. Them fans ain't going to have it. Um, the fans ain't going to have it. He can't treat the, the city of Philadelphia like that and they're going to forgive and forget. I said the same thing with Ben Simmons when they were trying, like, we want Ben Simmons back. I'm like, we're not going to take him back. What, what, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just asking. What did James Harden do to the fans? Well, when you play for a team, you do you have a, you have an obligation to the fan base. You didn't show up for work for ten days. You just can't take time off because you're unhappy. You not get, you ain't getting traded. And first of all, Daryl Mara screwed this thing up too. James Harden got one year left on his deal. The notion he gonna get a, a buck a bucket load of picks and players to have a guy who's only gonna be on that team for one year. He's not gonna get a good deal. He's got to make the best deal possible. The, the, the irony of this whole thing is if he had to trade to James Harden a month ago or three weeks ago, they might have been in the sweepstakes to get Drew Harden, they, uh, Drew Holiday, and they would have had a better team. 
Now, there's nothing they can do. They're probably going to get a couple of bench players for James. But the notion that they're going to get a lot for James, who has one year, and first of all, this is the third year in a row he's demanded out. Yeah. You, could, you think some team is going to give him a long-term deal? Hell no. <clears throat> I've probably been in this position more than anyone. And as a player, <clears throat> what you must have, and it's an unwritten law, you must have a certain level of professionalism, right? So you and the organization are having problems. The professionalism kick, kicks in. Ernie, you're my agent. They don't want me to more handle it. You don't get on social media and say he's a liar. You don't do this. You don't do that. And it should be handled professionally by both sides. It wasn't handled professionally. He came back. He's been unprofessional. It's affecting the team. Now, if you're a top-name player and a star player, you never want to do anything to, to affect the team. So I, w I would have liked to see more professional. Look, I've, I've had a problem with organization. I say Perry Rogers, Mike Parrish, Mitch Kupchak don't want me no more. I would like to go to Miami, handle it. I may say one or two things, but I'm not going to affect the team. So, you know, I don't know what's going on. How do you think on. it's affecting the team at, at, at this point before you play? Because if I'm Joel Embiid, we, we, we failed the last couple of years. The time is now, and we don't need no... We don't need no no chitter chatter. We don't need no nonsense. We we want to start the season on a good note. We want everybody healthy. This is our chance. Milwaukee just got stronger. All these other teams just got, just got stronger. So believe it or not, Joe's chance of winning the championship has just diminished by a little, a lot, a lot. Yeah. Unfortunately, I would say that there is no right answer, or there is no. There was no right source or, who, or whose fault it is. I wouldn't say that it's, it's a, total, a totality of James Harden. I wouldn't say it's a totality of Daryl Moyer. But they definitely added fuel to each, one, each other's fire, which leads to Shaq's point about professionalism. The one not no – one no one yet in this circumstance has ever put out – said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring out a fire extinguisher and going to just calm it just a little bit. Like, guy cut shows up to, today, yesterday – like to make a bigger deal out of it by not allowing him to get on the plane. I'm not putting a fire extinguisher on it. I'm making it bigger than it is. You know, that's what do you mean? Let, because if he comes to the plane, he sits on the bench. So what? If he, they're not they're not concerned about him being in shape. So don't give us that. No, well, wait, you think he they're not do, concerned you, but my about him is, being in shape? Yeah, my, okay. Well, so you put a fire. That's yeah, adding no, fuel. So to the you fire. think he can just skip practice for 10 days and show up and we can go to the first game? You could go to the first game because you're still part of the team and we're still paying you. Wait, wait, yes, wait. He, he hasn't been part of the team for 10 days. Right, but you excuse the absence. They said that after they, the fact. They excuse the absence. They saying what it is. So if you excuse the absence, you're not concerned about him being in shape. Well, you we excuse know he the works absence, out. and now you're saying we want you to ramp up and get ready for yeah, the but season. No, and, but, but and, we also know, and just like and and James, But you're not buying that. I'm not buying it because I also know that Rico Hines is the best that's why he's been Philadelphia. He has been the best individual trainer in basketball for NBA players the last five years. Ask Pascal Siakam and all of the Toronto Raptors where he started working those guys out in L.A. That guy is not there. If you say, Rico, you stay with him, then I'm like, I believe it. But it's, it's, no one put a fire extinguisher on it. They just keep adding. So James might not show up next now because he's not, it's just a continuation. <laughs> well, I, of, I actually, of, and, it, I, and it, I actually uh, disagree with you. It, I, it's a continuation. The, the Sixers, you know, they don't know what to do. I'm watching TV because I'm living in Philly. They got Nick Nurse on TV looking like an idiot. But what, the, what has, what has Daryl Morey Daryl Morey hasn't Wait, said a word. Thank you. So yeah, has but, he put but, a fire but, extinguisher but, on it? Well, That's not. Gee, you're the, well, you're the well, president you, of the he team. Can, no, no, no. I, 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 Daryl Morey is a good hey, person. Hey, Kenny, he, 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 he couldn't bring a fire extinguisher because James didn't show up. When the guy calls you a liar in public, you have to either trade him or address that issue. He hasn't said anything. But then then James could have came to practice and practice and been professional to pick it's, it back. And that's my point. But fuel, he didn't show fuel, up. Fuel, fuel, yeah. no fire extinguisher. Well, listen, if you can't, listen, I don't, I, I just disagree with you. You just cannot show up for work because you pissed off. Uh, interesting on, way for Nick Nurse to begin his, uh, I saw him on TV and he's like, I know. I don't know where James and, is. And, and he faces his former assistant. Look Adrian at y'all running. Griffin. See, look at him running. I did too, look, Ernie. I, look, no, Ernie. I'm not moving. Ernie, I stand. Oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> it wasn't exactly like that. Yes, it was. Oh, God bless my man here, man. Rest in peace, Steve Irwin.